the title of my talk is Getting From Here to There. But that's not only the title of my talk, that's also the title of an article that really influenced my UDL journey. It's an article that was published back in 2009 by David Rose. You've probably heard of him, right? He's kind of a big deal. People love him. And my colleague at CAS now, Jenna Gravel. And in that article, uh, they compared UDL to a GPS unit. And it's true. In a lot of ways, UDL is like a GPS unit. Think about how we represent information. Uh, we get information from a GPS unit as visuals. If we turn on the, uh, if we have the turn by turn directions turned on, we get it as audio. And then, I don't know if you know this, but if you have an Apple Watch, you can get the information as haptics or vibration patterns. So your Apple Watch can actually tell you when it's time to turn. And rest assured, I'm not the one driving when I use that feature. <laughs> the other thing is, with the GPS unit, we have one goal, one destination. And then the GPS unit adjusts according to traffic conditions and so on. So we have multiple routes, multiple pathways for how we get there. But in some ways, a GPS unit is not a perfect analogy or perfect metaphor for UDL. So I'm going to have the authors of that article explain this for you. So here they are when this article was released. And if the audio doesn't work, that's OK, because guess what? We have captions. Oh, how do I go back? So it was fun to go through it and look at it explicitly and use it as a way to look at the guidelines and say, why does it do such a good job? It's helpful to consider that GPS is really trying to get you to a single place. Education is trying to prepare you for every time you're in a new place, you're skillful, uh, active, you know what to do, you're um, confident in your abilities to look around. GPS is actually sometimes make you feel less like you could do with an output. So a GPS is not really a good educational tool as a presently designed, although we have some ideas for how we could do it better. Right. And we really know that the goal of education is to be developing expert learners. And we wonder, is the GPS really helping to develop independence, which is definitely a skill and a strategy that we want our students to develop. So maybe a GPS unit is not a perfect metaphor. But then again, what is? UDL is such a rich framework. So the goal with the metaphor is not to be perfect. It's to find one that's helpful. So I want to share with you one that's been helpful to me, and it's the bicycle. So I want you to close your eyes for a second and remember when you first learned how to ride a bicycle. And hopefully that will get you in a really nice, happy mood. I'm sure if you were like me, there were a few stumbles. There was maybe a little bit of crying, or in my case, a lot of crying. But over time, you got it, right? There was that moment when you finally got it. And you moved from needing help from an expert, another expert, to actually doing it on your own. The bicycle also stands for something else for me. It stands for the role of technology and learning. So I have another video, and you may recognize this young man when you see him. I think one of the, the things that really separates us from the high primates is that uh, we're tool builders. And I read a, uh, a study that measured the efficiency of locomotion for various species on the planet. The condor used the least energy to move a kilometer. And uh, humans came in uh, with a rather unimpressive showing about a third of the way down the list. It was not, not uh, too proud of a showing for the crown of creation. So uh, that didn't look so good, but then somebody at Scientific American had the insight to test the efficiency of locomotion for a man on a bicycle. And a man on a bicycle, or a human on a bicycle, blew the condor away, completely off the top of the charts. And that's what a computer is to me. Uh, what a computer is to me is it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with. And it's the equivalent of a bicycle for our minds. That's what I base my work as a technologist on. A computer 
is a bicycle for the mind. And what the late Steve Jobs meant by that is that a computer, or any technology for that matter, amplifies human ability. It lets you do more than you could do without it. Now here's the thing. For some of us, technology makes things easier. For, all, for most of us, actually. For some of us, it makes it possible. So I want to give you an example. This is my friend Christopher Hills. Uh, Christopher is a video editor based in Australia. And Christopher also has cerebral palsy. So the best way to get to know Christopher is to actually see him at work, or actually see one of the videos that he's created. And I'm going to narrate this. This doesn't have audio. On the screen, we see title that says, in the not too distant past. We now see Christopher's grandfather sit at a couch, start to read a paperback book. Christopher sits next to him in the wheelchair. Then we see his father bring in what looks like a ginormous piece of equipment. Looks about the size of a washing machine. He plugs it in, and it turns out to be a mechanical page turner. He places the book on top of the device, places a cord over the book, and then a metal arm holds the book in place. Now we see him plug in a control uh, panel that has some arrows on it indicating the different kinds of page turns you can perform. And now we see the book being turned so that Christopher can read it along with his grandfather. And the title says, Now. We then see his grandfather again sit at the table at the kitchen, and he's flipping through the pages of an electronic book on his iPad, and then it cuts to Christopher using a switch that allows him to turn the pages on his iPad without actually touching the device. All he's doing is just tapping with his head, and it performs the page flips for them. So that's just a great example of how far we've come in just a few years with the help of technology. So for somebody like Christopher, it allowed him to get his education. It allowed him to be independent. It gave him a bicycle for his mind. So Christopher and I uh, did something a few years ago. We actually co-wrote a book. You can actually get this book right now. It's available on the iBook store. And it's called Hands Free, appropriately. And what's really important about this book is not the book itself. It's the collaboration that brought it into being. So here's the thing. Christopher is in Australia. I'm in Florida. We wrote this book over Facebook and using Dropbox. So talk about getting from here to there. I got to Australia, Christopher got to Florida, and we did that virtually. So in some ways, I became Christopher's hands because typing is difficult for him, and he became my eyes because video editing is difficult for me. So in the video, all of the, uh, in the book, all of the videos were done by Christopher, and most of the writing was done by me. So it's a beautiful collaboration. And that's what technology does. It's, it brings us together and allows these collaborations to flourish. In my own life, technology has made a big difference. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have gotten from there to here had it not been for technology. Now, I had a chance to share that story this summer at the ISTE conference with a few thousand of my friends, as you can <laughs> tell from the photo. And I'm not going to recap it here, but what I want to show you is just a few of the technologies that have made a difference in my life. And when we think about accessible educational materials, we need to think about two things. The materials themselves, and then the technologies that we use to deliver them. And each of those things, when they're accessible, they're powerful on their own. But somebody used a word earlier this morning. When we bring them together, that's when we have that synergy that makes a huge difference in people's lives, when both are accessible, the materials and the technologies. So I just want to share with you a few of the uh, tricks that I use on my daily uh, work. Most of you probably have, or some of you have, a Windows 10 computer. And you have something called the Edge web browser running on your computer. This is how you surf the web on computers today, right, for the most part, if you're a Windows user. 
on the Edge web browser, you can actually bring up EPUB books. And when you do that, you can tap on the screen, it brings up some controls, and then you can increase the text size, you can adjust the spacing, you can change the font, so maybe you can go to a cleaner font that's easy to read on the screen, and you can even adjust the background so you have more contrast. And finally, you could even turn on text-to-speech with word highlighting. So that supports the coding for some learners, just like so. You can do the same thing on web pages. You can look for an icon at the top of the screen that's called a reading view. And again, you have all of those appearance options. And you have that text-to-speech all built in for free. So my challenge to you is to, if you have a Windows 10 computer, look for the Edge web browser and see if you can find an EPUB that you can load into it. And I do the same thing on my mobile devices. I use the iPad for reading. I can bring up an EPUB book in iBooks. I can increase the text size. I can change the background. And again, when my eyes get tired, I can turn on the text-to-speech. So in just about every device, there's some sort of accessibility feature that you can use. But the key is the materials. They have to be accessible so that we can take advantage of all of these features. So I'm going to go back to the bicycle. We don't buy a bicycle for tall people. We don't buy a bicycle for short people. We just buy a bicycle with an adjustable seat. And by adjusting that seat, we put each rider in the optimal position for riding so that they get the most of their physical and mental abilities. What I want you to do when you leave here is I want you to do the same thing for your learners. I want you to create an adjustable seat for learning by doing things like accessing EPUB books and turning on some of those accessibility features. And then as our students leave our schools and they go into the larger world out there, and as they move from riding a bicycle to driving, what I want you to do is to put them in the optimal position for driving their own learning. That is the key. That's expert learning. It's when you're in control, you're in the driver's seat of your experience of learning. So I want to leave you with one of my favorite quotes in education. This is what drives my work. It's from Michael Fallan. And it is, pedagogy should be the driver, technology should be the accelerator. So technology basically allows you to do more than you could do without it. So the goal, to go back to the title of my presentation, is not to help learners get from here to there. It's to plan and enjoy their own journeys. The goal is not to get from here to there. It's to plan and be able to enjoy some exciting and incredible journeys. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.